Hello and welcome to The Political Brief. I'm Molly Hall. And I'm Mark Perlman. Coming up in this week's edition, as France marks two years since its worst terror attack, the country searches for solutions to French jihadists returning home. Plus, President Macron unveils his plans to boost underprivileged neighborhoods. And satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo accuses a media outlet of condemning it to death a second time. It was a day of remembrance. This past Monday, France marked the second anniversary of the November 13th terror attacks. President Emmanuel Macron, accompanied by the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, and his predecessor, Francois Hollande, all attended the memorial ceremony. Followed the sequence of tragic events as they unfolded. From the Stade de France National Stadium, where the terrorists first struck, to the bars and restaurants in the 10th and 11th districts of Paris that were targeted next. And finally, the Bataclan Concert Hall, and a very emotional moment when the names of the 130 victims of that fateful night were read out loud. At each location, the president tried to console those who lost loved ones. Two years later, the investigation into the attacks is far from finished. But one thing is known. It was ordered by the Islamic State in Syria. The authorities here are keeping a very close eye on French jihadists returning home, especially now that the terrorist organization is collapsing. That's right, Mark. Now officials say nearly 400 people have been put under investigation. The majority are in custody and the remainder under strict judicial monitoring. Meanwhile, some 690 French fighters are believed to still be living across Syria and Iraq. The most likely to return or try to return to France are widows with their children. There are thought to be some 400 minors. Now, they will be put into de-radicalization programs or placed into foster care. President Macron says the situation should be handled individually. I say it's on a case-by-case basis. There are some who can return without being repatriated, there are some who can be repatriated, and there are some who will be tried with their families in certain circumstances in the country where they are, especially Iraq. But some among the opposition are saying that this is far too generous. Those who've betrayed our country, who are enemies of the nation, who are committed to destroying our civilization, cannot return to France. Not even if they're trialed and imprisoned by France? I don't believe we have to take back those who betrayed us, and that the decision of what to do with them should be taken by the ruling authorities in the territories where they fought. But now perhaps the real strategy of the government seems to be that as few fighters as possible make it back home, says the defense minister indicated in a recent interview. We will fight until the end. And if jihadists perish during these fights in Raqqa, then I would say even better. And if they fall into the hands of the Syrian forces, then they will depend on the jurisdiction of the Syrian forces. As the commemoration of the Paris attacks were taking place, Charlie Hebdo, the satirical newspaper decimated by terrorists back in January of 2015, accused another media outlet of calling for another attack. It all started when Charlie Hebdo portrayed Edoui Plenel, the editor of the investigative news outlet Mediapart, with the headline, We Didn't Know. And you see him closing his eyes, his ears, his mouth. It was a dig at Mediapart's alleged reluctance to criticize Tariq Ramadan, an Islamic scholar accused of rape by several women because Mediapart agrees with his ideas. Plenel shot back on the radio several days later, arguing that this caricature was part of a campaign waged by Charlie Hebdo and Emmanuel Valls, the former prime minister, as well as his followers, and he said this was part of a general war against Muslim. And this sentence clearly touched a raw nerve at Charlie Hebdo. In an editorial, Ries, the editor of Charlie Hebdo, said, we will never forget this sentence. This means you're condemning us to death for a second time. Equally furious 
was the former Prime Minister, Manuel Valls. When we take a look at the exact sentence of Edwy Plenel, where he quotes me too and likens Charlie Hebdo and I to the extreme right, it's very serious. It's very serious, sir. It's an incentive to murder. Mediapart has not responded, except by publishing an investigative story on Tariq Ramadan's alleged sexual harassment. In the meantime, the Conservative Party, Les Républicains, is looking for a new leader. The party is trying to heal wounds after this year's implosion of its presidential candidate, François Fillon. But it has not been a smooth ride. This week, one of the party's heavyweights, former Prime Minister Alain Juppé, caused an uproar by hinting that he could possibly join hands with Emmanuel Macron in the future. Armistice Day, a symbolic moment for a handshake that could mark the start of a rapprochement between Emmanuel Macron and Alain Juppé. Ahead of the Republicans' upcoming vote to elect a new party president, Juppé has been setting out his ideas. He wants to create a great centrist movement for 2019 European elections. He's complimented the current president's ideas on Europe and announced his rival Republican candidate Laurent Vauquier's anti-elitist agenda, telling the Sud-West newspaper, I can't stand this mindset. A nation with no elite is a nation with no bearings. His political foe was quick to hit back, denouncing an allegiance between Juppé and Macron on Europe. This suggestion is a mistake because we don't share the same vision of Europe as Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron is suggesting Europe enlarges to include Balkan countries. I think this is a serious error because growth has killed Europe. Meanwhile, Juppé has denied a report in the Figaro newspaper that he and Macron have a shared list for the European elections. But with the words, we're not there, he left what some interpreted as a nuance of possibility. A month before the party leadership vote, favourite to win Laurent Vauquier is still facing resistance from the inside. The man Vauquier has modelled his hard right style on, former President Nicolas Sarkozy, implied he was distancing himself from his protégé. The one who doesn't bring people together, who isn't open, who thinks a political family is a cult and who isn't able to defend his convictions. Vauquier insists the comments weren't about him, as confusion reigns at party headquarters. Now this weekend, La République en Marche, Emmanuel Macron's movement, holds its first Congress to elect its new leader. And there's little suspense since Macron picked the government spokesman, Christophe Castaner, to lead the party. That's true, Molly. But for some members, this top-down management style is not what the grassroots movement that propelled Macron to the Élysée Palace was supposed to be about. And a hundred or so of them decided to resign, and they explained so in an open letter denouncing a lack of democracy and saying the French were meant to be at the heart of political life, not its decoration. Well, earlier this week, Marc, we saw President Macron visit underprivileged neighborhoods north of Paris and around the northern city of Lille. This is where he outlined his plan to improve these working class areas. And for more on that, we're joined here in the studio by Florence Vilmino. So, Flo, tell us more. Well, what Macron essentially did was outline what's known as la politique de la ville, essentially the state's policy to give these sensitive urban neighborhoods a boost uh, and to reduce social inequality. Now, what the president wants to focus on is creating jobs. Uh, in these very difficult areas, it must uh, be said, unemployment is really high in these areas. It's about 2.5 times higher than the national average. So uh, to, um, to create jobs, uh, the president is actually bringing back a state subsidy for companies that hire people from these underprivileged neighborhoods. Let's take a look at these subsidies. Essentially, if you hire someone for a long-term contract, you'll get 15,000 euros spread over three years. If you hire uh, someone from these neighborhoods for a short-term contract, you'll get 5,000 uh, euros spread over two years. The aim of all this is to create a between 15 and 25,000 jobs in the coming years. What's interesting, though, is this, uh, this subsidy uh, is not a new idea. In fact, the previous president, François Hollande, experimented with these hiring subsidies without much success. Macron uh, says this version is a simplified version that's going to work. We have to encourage businesses. Our policy isn't simply to help an area. No, we're helping people. We're helping them to be mobile. 
to find success in their neighborhoods or elsewhere, to find a stable job. Florence, it's the first time since his election that Emmanuel Macron is visiting uh, these neighborhoods. He's been criticized uh, as an elite person disconnected from the reality. Indeed, and when he was elected, Macron actually raised a lot of eyebrows because he got rid of the ministry in charge of policies for these uh, suburban areas, the, the Ministère de la Ville, if you will. And it's true that since May, uh, his policies haven't really been on social issues, but more on economic issues. He's been pushing through all sorts of reforms that critics say benefit the rich and not really the working class. For instance, uh, he's made the labor market more flexible. He's gotten rid of a controversial wealth tax. So uh, a lot of people say this is what he's done since he's become president. And critics also say that he actually has a history of being somewhat insulting for these struggling neighborhoods. When he was a minister, for instance, he ruffled feathers for talking about the illiterate, for talking about the importance of wearing suits. Uh, and when he was president, he called uh, these people lazy. So uh, it, it seems like he has a, a complicated neighborhood with uh, these, uh, these neighborhoods. And according to a recent poll, 65% of people say they don't feel like they've really benefited from Macron's policies yet. So the question is, could this very public visit to these struggling neighborhoods this week, could this very public visit be an attempt to shake this reputation of being a technocrat, an elite, uh, elitist, a politician disconnected? Could this be uh, an attempt to show that he cares? Well, Macron has a word for his critics. I don't know what that means, that my policies favor the rich. All I know is that when the economy doesn't pull the country up, when businesses fail, when people don't invest in the country, struggling neighborhoods suffer. Now, on top of boosting jobs, the president says that he wants to bring public service back to these struggling neighborhoods. For instance, he wants to increase the number of post offices and health centers. We'll see how he fares. Thank you, Florence, and thank you for watching. That's all we have time for this week. We'll see you next time on The Political Brief.